Bob Collymore, Chief Executive Officer, Safaricom. <laughs> Good to see you as always, Bob. It's, it's great when you call me that because you know, you, I know you personally. When yes. you're the Chief Executive, it sounds really important. No, no, but you are, and I value the friendship as well. Bob, I asked you just before we started uh, how long you'd been in the seat for, and I think you said nearly 48 months. Um, <clears throat> yes, nearly 48 months. I, I came into country at the end of actually the week of the promulgation of the constitution yes which is the end of august and then i took the reins from michael uh the first of november so yeah so we're nearly there we're and nearly i was looking back at the share price i was recalling the time that that was do you remember we had an irrational competitor in airtel barty airtel the share price i think got as low as two shillings and 50 cents and I think uh, if I look back over this 48-month period, you've basically seen a, about a 450% increase in shareholder value, which is a miraculous achievement. And first of all, may I congratulate you on that? I, and I'm sure most shareholders would agree that that's a remarkable achievement in that period of time. So firstly, congratulations on that point, which sometimes I think people miss. And, you know, that really is... A, an extraordinary story of value creation. Thank you. I think. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Bob, you know, if, if we look at it big picture right now, I mean, if I can just slice and dice a little bit of the earnings uh, segments, voice, people used to talk about voice being dead, dead as a dodo, it's gone, it's history. Your full year results, we're still talking about 60% of revenues coming out of there, double digit increase year on year. How do you characterize the voice landscape today? I think in large parts of the world, voice is, uh, voice is still something of a dying, mm. a dying breed. Um, as I look at a lot of other operators, voice is on the decline, it's on the serious decline. Uh, we've got our half year results, actually we're a day short of half mm. year, so after tomorrow we're in a close period, but um, we're still seeing voice growth and mm. we had predicted it at the full year. And they're kind of, um, one or two reasons for that. One is that we've just got more customers coming in. Yes. Um, uh, we've got a lot of young people who are achieving, you know, um, earning age, let me put it that way. Uh, so customer growth is still pretty, uh, pretty solid. Um, and, you know, voice pricing is still, is still quite low. We used to be the lowest. So I, I was in Dar es Salaam last week and discovered yes. that uh, they are on rock bottom prices. You know, is they are right? at one US cent a minute. Uh, and that's the <laughs> Is there any reason for that? Is um, price war. Mm. Um, a price war which was started and now they don't know how to stop it. Mm. And that, you know, that can't go I on. remember what you did with the price war, which was actually go against the trend and decide to lift prices because you said it was unsustainable. Yeah, it was a phrase we use a lot, mm. unsustainable pricing. And we've seen that play out some three or so years later. You know, you've seen new mobile uh, run into problems. You've yeah. seen uh, Orange not able to turn that thing around. Um, but I, I think we're the only operator that, that's making a profit. Mm. Uh, and really, uh, <laughs> unless you talk tabloid, uh, you have to run a business in a sustainable way. You have to make a profit or else you're not going to be around next year. No, sure. So. And what was the secret to your success? I mean, it, uh, your, your competitors seemingly couldn't make a fist of it. You've made a tremendous success of it. What would you say was the secret of your success? Because as you said, you're not the cheapest offering in that field at the moment. I think there are a few elements to it. Um, <clears throat> the brand is a strong Kenyan yes. brand. And the, it's, it's a strong Kenyan brand because we've been investing in this brand for 14 years now. Mm. Incidentally, we, we are also coming up to our um, Next month, we're coming up to our 15th anniversary. Wow. Um, but that, you know, that, that brand was built because we are relevant to, to Kenyans. We use the phrase transforming lives to define our, our purpose. And so, yes, we do make a profit, and you, you open up by talking about the numbers. But we make a significant difference to the ordinary Kenyan, you know, at the furthest reaches. You know, my colleague, um, uh, Zioka has just come back from Dadaab mm. uh, last night, well, and, and I, I'm due to go there in the next, uh, next few weeks. Oh, yeah. So we go as far out there, we make a difference to them. And so it was that brand strength and that brand relevance, I think, which, uh, which, which took, us, took us through. Also, we've also been pretty transparent. Yes. You know, and we say we, we don't do things which doesn't make any sense. And whenever we've done things like stop 
unlimited data. You remember, we used I to have do, unlimited yeah. data, we used to have unlimited SMS. I was pretty upfront and I said, you know, we're stopping it because it doesn't make commercial sense and if you continue to do it, uh, the business will fold. Yes. Simply. <laughs> and uh, I think customers kind of respect that. They're not always happy about it, but they tend to respect that. Turning to that issue about the brand, you know, it's quite interesting. I remember you showing me some data where it said that, you know, Safaricom on a brand delight calculation, I think it was, which is essentially valuing the brand, had the highest brand equity in a number of regions in Africa. Was I, do you remember that? Yeah, so there's a couple of things. The first one is that uh, brand equity, our brand yes. equity sits at uh, about 86%. And where would the average be? The next Kenyan brand yes. is, sits at, um, you know, of all brands, mm. sits at 55%. Wow. So there's a, quite a big delta. 31 percentage points. Between us and any other brand. Now, in most countries, you know, you, you can pick some of the, the famous FMCG brands, which would sit way yes. up there. Uh, Coca-Cola is one, for example. Mm. But the, uh, the other element of, the, um, of the, the kind of the relevance is GSMA had published some statistics not long ago, mm. which showed um, the, and we call it the delight with, with the telecoms industry. Yes. So it's, it's industry-led rather than, than brand-led. Mm. And uh, I think Safari, I can't remember the exact numbers. Safaricom sat, sorry, not Safaricom, but Kenya sat at about 75%. Wow. Uh, most of Europe and the US yes. sat in the, um, in the 30s and the 40s. Yes. And the next nearest was, I think, uh, you know, a, Russian, mm. uh, a Russian network that sat at 50, 50 something percent. Okay. And so in Kenya, and you know, we're, we're clearly the, the, the brand leader in this space. In Kenya, uh, more people found the relevance and the attraction of telecommunications than yes. any other part of the world. And uh, you know, I think even the GSMA weren't quite sure why that It was, was so high and yeah. such an outlier. But I think it's remarkable, isn't it? And, it? and it sort of made the brand very bulletproof, I think. Well, we're not bulletproof, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's made us a bit more resilient, yeah. Now, uh, coming down to a couple of other uh, segments, mobile data, I remember um, your CFO talking about an inflection point. I look at the demography of the country, very young population. What, what is happening there? Because you know, that really, for me, is the most exciting part of the story, at, you know, the information century, people using it for a mobile wallet, internet, sending payments across M-Pesa. What's happening in that space, Bob? Uh, but the internet is one of the most exciting things that, um, as a human race, we've faced for, come for some time. We were a little bit lazy for a little bit too long. When I first took the reins, I remember Michael saying to me, what we have to drive now is mobile data. And I think we were a bit slow in picking that one up. So last year, mobile data grew by 43 percent, yeah. something like that. Yes. Um, and we were pretty pleased with that because mm. that was kind of the first time we started to yes. see that inflection point. But actually, when we looked at some of our partner networks, when yeah. we looked at you know, the South Africans, for example. This is Vodacom. Vodacom. Mm. Uh, we realized that actually our performance wasn't that good. Yes. <laughs> but were they starting from the same level as you were? No, no, they started earlier, but they were still yes. seeing year-in-year -year growth, which was higher than 43%. Mm. And so, as a team, we kind of went back to it and said, no, no, guys, you know, we're being a little bit lazy. And so yes. we're, we're pushing much harder on mobile data this year. Uh, and, um, you know, so the half-year results will be announced in about mm. six weeks' time, and so you'll see how that's panning out. But the real things which are driving that yes. is, uh, is smartphones. Mm. So if you go into one of our Safaricom shops, you'll see that we don't sell, we only sell smartphones. We don't sell any ordinary, you mm. know, all the, the days of the Kamamba's gone, right? Yes. Um, uh, currently, we're running a, a fantastic promotion with, with Samsung, for example. Yes. That's helping to drive smartphone take up and we find that once you move someone even from a feature phone mm. you know and a feature phone would be like a blackberry yes even moving them from a feature phone to a smartphone the average revenue generated by that customer yes. multiplies by can multiply by as much as four times is that right yeah because you know what you've got is because you're, you're you're being more compulsive much more utility you know you want to check the weather you want to check you, know, you will be checking share prices yes. constantly yes I um uh, you know, yeah. even if you're sitting, you know, sometimes you're sitting in the, you just in the cafe and you hear a piece of music and think, what is that? And then you go into right. Soundhound. And so there's a lot more utility and, uh, and young people are, are using it a lot. But, you know, we mustn't forget what I think in the UK we used to call the silver surfers. So yes. people with silver here who've got a lot of time yes. who were kind of surfacing, surfing 
the, the net. Is, is, is that what's playing out here as well? Not so much yeah. a silver I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Not so much a silver surfer yet. It is very much the young people. Yes. And it's very much people around social media. Yes. Um, which, is which is common, I think, across, mm. across the world. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yes. all those things. YouTube. U User-generated content is also a big thing. You don't need to pump, you know, pass editions of Friends mm. and stuff like that. People don't really want to watch that. They want to watch stuff which is very relevant to them in the local market. And you know, I was thinking about this, if you haven't experienced a smartphone, how do you know what that experience is? You know, how do you know what you're missing? Isn't that a complexity when you're in a market such as this, that people are used to, you know, a speed of internet, they don't realize this could be 20 times faster. How, how do you get them? <laughs> I, I <didn't>, I, <laughs> yes, it is, uh, you know, one of my favorite, um, uh, nominated senators, yes. um, a lady, uh, and she said to me, she says, Bob, look at my phone, look at the state of this phone. Uh, I said, well, you, you need to get a new phone. She says, but I want a phone with buttons on them. Yes. I, I said, you know, Senator, it's, um, <laughs> she says, I'm too old yes. to do this swiping thing. Yeah. But she's, she's kind of running out of time, you know, she's going to have to move to swipey, swiping things because yes. there are fewer and fewer. Well, only Blackberry, I think, have still got the buttons. Uh, yeah. And, and then, you know, people spoke a lot about a tipping point being in the price for the smartphone device, right? Saying that once you got below $100, that was a magic number. Are we seeing, are we seeing an acceleration in take up? Are we at the right price point? Are you happy as a telecom operator that you've got enough offerings out there at the right price points to, to continue this sort of mobile data takeoff? Yeah, so um, the entry level price is now at Forty-eight dollars. Mm. I, I call, talk dollars instead of shillings yes, because yes. you know or it relates more universal. to my, the, the price that I'm paying. Um, so forty-eight dollars is the entry-level retail price now, mm. uh, which is an interesting point. Yes. We finally got below fifty, and I think we're one of the few markets where we were able to do that, and that's made a big difference, yes. a big dent in the numbers. But I also need to be careful because the more <laughs> the more smartphones I put on, yes, it does generate revenues, yes. but the more investment I then need to put into the network mm. to keep up. Yes. Because, you know, data, I think uh, the last reported numbers, data had grown 100% year on year. So you're putting 100% more pressure on the network. Correct. And, 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 and voice, incidentally, uh, year on year, I mean, voice had increased by 30, around 30 percent year in year. That's big, that's big incredible. increase in voice usage, not voice yes. revenue. Because yes. Of course the but obviously, a, a, a price per minute had come down. But Pr price per minute yeah. has come. You know, blended prices as we yes. call it, had ha, had come down. Um, so that puts a lot of strain on the network, and that's why we're investing. Last year we invested 27 billion shillings. Yes. Uh, this year I, I've got my budget meeting after this actually. But, uh, <laughs> this year we are planning to invest. 30 or more yes. billion shillings just to keep this network up and, and big. And I know, you know we'll, we'll talk a little bit about spectrum and stuff in a yes. minute, but you know, they're all investments which you have to then pour in in order to serve the, um, the, smartphone, the smartphone market. So if you're living in Nairobi, you'd find that uh, you know, recently the experience has been not, not quite so good. It, it's had drop-offs, yes. Um, hopefully in the last couple of weeks you'll have started to see a little bit of a turn. And yeah. The reason for that is because we've done what we call um, re-farming of mm. some spectrum. So the 900 megahertz of spectrum, which yes. was traditionally used for 2G phones, um, is actually much more efficient on 3G. Is and it? so we've moved customers off the 900, 2G customers off the 900, and move the 3G customers onto 900. And so that does a couple of things. One, it gives you further reach, yes. because the lower the spectrum, the further the reach. And secondly, better penetration into buildings, because your experience, your bad experience. Is, is what all these buildings going is up? In, is in building. Mm. Well, it's partly the buildings going up and creating shadows, mm. but it's also in building mm. coverage. So this building, this room is fine because you're yes. surrounded by glass, but if you're in the center of the building, it becomes more difficult mm. to penetrate that. So the 900 megahertz actually does that better. So you would have seen, and we've been doing this over the last couple of weeks, you would have seen some improvements in some parts. But it's, um, it's, a, constant, mm. it's a constant battle, and, um, but it's a good, good challenge to have. Absolutely, you've got growth, right? I mean, that's far better than not having it and managing something else. If I can, if I can now j just touch on quickly message revenues, which, by the way, at the full year mark, were up 
0.19%. And this was in a world when everyone's talking about WhatsApp and talking about all these new instant messenger functions. How did you manage that? Well, um, the penetration of smartphones helped mm. in, in a odd way because, because we don't have quite as many smartphones or the penetration is not quite as high mm. as some of the more developed markets because in order to do WhatsApp or Viber or any of those over the top yes. services, you need to have a smartphone. Um, and because we don't have that, uh, we haven't seen WhatsApp yeah. Take over. That, that, that's one reason. Uh, but you, you know, I mean, you and I use WhatsApp all the time. Yes. Um, when I'm talking to you, I actually talk to you on WhatsApp that's, that's right. over because it's, it's kind of a bit more convenient, a bit richer. Uh, but the other reason is because our SMS pricing is actually quite low. Yes. And when I was in the UK the last time, I was horrified to be reminded that the price of an SMS is about 15 shillings. Uh, per SMS? Per SMS. Whereas here, you can pay Safaricom... I think you got bundles for 20 shillings. We got bundles. We got bundles for 5 shillings. Mm. You pay 5 shillings and you get, you know, you get a number of SMSs. You pay 10 shillings and you get 200 SMSs. I can't remember. Um, so if you have 200 SMSs per day, That's a lot of SMSs. You, know, you don't really need to, um, to do WhatsApp. Now, can I go to M-Pesa, which obviously has been this fantastic mobile money story, it's practically rebranded Kenya, you know, when I go around parts of the world, you know, it's sort of elephants or lions and M-Pesa, it's quite incredible. And, yes, that too, of course. And, uh, it, you know, it's sort of brought some sexiness to the Kenya brand. I think you should, Brand Kenya should be uh, giving you something for that. But, you know, going great guns, um, it's grown exponentially in point of fact. I mean, last, I think the last full year results we were talking revenues up 21.61% at $26.56 billion, which is nearly $300 million or thereabouts. Obviously, everyone is talking about Equity Bank, their mobile money offering. How do you characterize the space? I mean, I know it's fluid. What, what, what in your view? Hmm. Underexploited. Underexploited. Underexploited is how I characterize it. Uh, you know, more than 90% of transactions are currently cash. Yes. <laughs> I saw that. You said that one day. I was astonished. And, and therefore, there's all that market to go for. So I, I, you know, I keep saying I think the market is plenty big enough. Yes. And um, with an innovative approach, then I think uh, you know, new players can easily come into this market and take a slice of that market. Our share of the market, of course, will shrink over yes. time. But then the market will grow. You're saying much, the pie is getting bigger. The pie will get much bigger. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, look, Mpesa is, is really entrenched in, yes. in uh, Kenyan society. So that's not something to worry about. But I think commentators from outside have kind of viewed this thing in a more of an alarmist way than they, they looked should do. It was very binary, you know, a one winner, one loser. And I yeah. think yeah, there was an article in The Economist which said as much. And then I, I think the market is, is, is big enough for several players, not just, yes. not just two players. It's just that people haven't been very good in coming into the market so far. And people believe that by throwing free transaction will make a difference. Well, you know, we've been running with free transaction as a competitor now for more than a year, mm. and it's made no difference. I think M-Pesa has still taken 90, I think 98% of, 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 of the mobile. All mobile money. Yes. Uh, that's not sustainable in the long run. I mean, mm. it, you can't continue like that. And so I think new players coming in and, and you're expanding. I saw there was a, there was a, a, a Business Daily wrote yesterday about Lipa Nampesa, and you were saying you're expanding. You would receipt people. I think it was it was more embedded in the sort of payment system. How would you characterize what you're doing with Mpesa at the moment? So you know we we've often said that Mpesa is not a banking product. Yes. It supplements and complements banking products, which we've done with KCB and with CBA. Um, but in itself is a payment product. And therein lies the opportunity. Now, government and the NGSA have said that they want to get cash out of the, um, the public service vehicles uh, for all sorts of reasons. And if you get cash out, then there's another opportunity for M-Pesa, together with other payment mechanisms. Um, and we've seen other people kind of come and go, and you know we've, we've seen people experiment with Beba Pay, for example. Yes. Um, but all of those things will come right in, in time. And that's just one example. That's just the, the, the PSV sector, government payments, mm. revenue collection, um, 
ordinary uh, merchant transaction, or by merchant transaction, I mean going and buying yes. uh, you know, a kilogram of, of unga. Um, you can pay. Have we seen significant growth in that area? We've seen, yeah. Look, I mean, you know, obviously the, the timing of this interview is not no, no, is not sorry, best that, because of no, the, it's rather the good happier. actually the timing. But we can <laughs> come back. You certainly can come back in six weeks and like take a, a closer look at those numbers. Um, but uh, what I can say is that um, Lipa Nampesa is taking more. You know, Lipa Nampesa, which is the, the merchant payment system, is taking more than fifty percent. Of all the um, the electronic payments in the country today, already. So, if you look at the statistics reported by um, Central Bank, yes, you can see what the banks are doing in electronic yes. payments. Yes, and then we know what we're doing. So, we're doing more than fifty percent of that. And that uh, good, yes, but you know, at half year, I think mm -hmm. we said we had already signed up some hundred and ten, hundred and twenty thousand merchants. Mm. And our trick was now to get more of those merchants using it. And so the ones who are using it have grown how much they're using yes. per day. And then we are constantly activating the, the, uh, the, dormant, the dormant ones. But, you, you know, I, mean, I, was, I was shopping at the weekend, uh, last weekend, um, and, I went to, and I bought an item of furniture. Mm. And it was 70,000 shillings. And you pay by Nipa Nempesa. Similarly, you know, if we go have yes. uh, lunch on Sundays, we yes. pay the restaurant by Lipa and Pesce. So it is, it is kind of Deeply ubiquitous. But also, Kenya is moving towards this cash mm. light yes. approach. One, because it gets rid of a lot of corruption, mm. particularly in terms of revenue collection. So if you want to collect car parking fees, if you want to collect uh, license I noticed fees, that the city council looking yeah. to do that. Yeah. And, and there you see lots of people coming into this, into this space. So yes. um, the space wasn't designed just for safari mm. It was designed for mobile money. What about this area, you know, for, for this intersection point between telecoms and banking? I mean, why aren't you telling me, Ali Khan, I'm going to open a bank now, for example? Um, for a few reasons. Yes. The biggest reason is because I know nothing about banking. Yes. And I don't have anybody, well, actually, I do have yes. Robert Ochoa, who used to be a banker, but um, I don't have a management team that knows anything about banking. I do have a management team that know quite a lot about telecoms. Of course. And um, because they, you know, they run the biggest telecom company in the, in the region, you know, not just in Kenya. So why would I distract them from running a solid telecom company to start to become a bank? Especially, why would I do that when I have good solid banks with whom yes. I can work? I have worked with CBA yes. since, um, since we launched M-Pesa, mm. so seven years ago. And they have been a good solid partner. They've grown us to where we are today. We have now, um, announced the partnership with KCB, yes. and um, that partnership has massive, massive potential. Not least because the two companies, our vision and our purpose is yes. very much aligned. If yes. you listen to Joshua talk about what KCB wants to do, you know he uses the phrase, "We will transform the nation." Mm. If you listen to a Safaricom person yes, speak, we say we, want, we will transform lives. And so when these two things come together, you can see how we want to make a big difference mm -hmm. to the, um, the small and medium and the micro size industries. Why? Because 40% of the country's GDP is generated by that sector. Yes. But what challenges do they have? They have a challenge around access to affordable financing, because that can be quite tough. I was speaking with an SME yesterday who, you know, she said to me she's paying 22% yes. cost of finance. Mm. It's silly. Yes. <laughs> Access to, they don't even know what ICT solutions mm. they, can, they can have. So we can say to them, you know, let us help you to build a website. Mm. Let us help you to manage your, um, your payroll yes. on a cloud. Mm. You don't even need to know what a cloud is. We'll yes. manage your payroll for yes. you. Let us give you some accounting software, which if you bought it yourself, number one, you, know, you just need to focus on what you're doing, mm. your core business, not yes. trying to run. Um, and how's the take up been? Because it wasn't too long ago that I went to the launch. I think we're talking about eight, 10 weeks ago, not more than that. Yeah, I think it was in July. Yeah. Um, it's, it's going very well. Yes. It's going very well. Um, the two teams do need to, to, mm. to learn to work together because they're kind of cross-selling. Yeah. And, um, but we've got a lot more to announce, you know, mm. there, there's, there's things in the pipeline. Obviously, we didn't announce a partnership without having stuff in the pipeline. So we have things which we will be announcing in the coming um, in the coming months. But the uh, I'm very pleased with how the two teams are working. Um, you know, Ogara and I have a kind of common vision. Yes, uh, I think we have 
a well, similar. I mean, both collaborators. Have we have very similar management yes. styles mm -hmm. as as well. So we believe in the power of collaboration, uh, and we ultimately believe in that thing, which is how do we transform our country? Yeah. How do we move our country into a proper middle income? Mm. <laughs> yes, well, you saw the news today, yeah. didn't you? Um, uh, <laughs> did you have any more money in your pocket yesterday? No, that's what uh, I uh, said today, it's yeah. no silver bullet. It's no, so, but, but so we know a number of the things which need to be done. We know that access to affordable capital is really, really important. Mm. Access to ICT as an enabler is really, really important. And so there's no need for me to become a bank. Mm. I have you know, KCB yeah. is the biggest bank around. I have very solid partners to get me there. And, and I guess, you know, from his perspective, yes. um, both Isaac, uh, Jeremy and, um, and Joshua, yes. they see there's no need for them to become a telco because they can partner with us to, uh, to do that. Bob, recently you acquired the assets, I believe, of U-Mobile. We will acquire because Ooh. we're still subject okay. to regulatory approval. Um, I, there was a bit of confusion I noticed when that deal was announced, particularly across social media. Do you just want to tell, tell us exactly what you're buying in that U-Mobile transaction? You, I think the people and the subscribers, did you take, you, you didn't take the subscribers? Yeah, so the motivation for us was not to see, um, I mean the first problem was going to be the staff. Mm. And the staff is a problem because if U-Mobile was allowed to fail, those people would be jobless. Yes. And so that was a concern for Madhu, the, the CEO for U Mobile. It was a big concern of his. And when he called me, he said, look, you know, um, we clearly can't continue to invest in this business for one reason or another. Uh, and so the, a, a, a three-way discussion started um, between me, Madhu, and um, Manoj, Manoj Kohli, who, yes. who was responsible for, um, for Airtel's telecom business at the time. And we said, you know, it would be wrong for us to allow this thing to fail. There's some assets that we need. Yes. So Spectrum is something that we need. We talked about the congestion yes. in the network at the moment. Um, so Spectrum we need. And so uh, this Spectrum is as deployable as extra capacity for you, is it? Yeah. So you can do one of two things in order to build capacity. You can build more towers. Yes. And that's tricky. It's very difficult to get sites to build yes. towers. It's not, the it's not the cost of the towers. We've got a lot of money to do that. Um, but it can take eight months sometimes just to get permission yes. to put up a tower. And that's a long time, mm. you, you know, you've got customers mm. who are suffering. So, um, this, so you either build more towers or you build more spectrum. So ideally, actually, you get a mix mm. of, the, of the two. Uh, and so he has spectrum in the 900 megahertz. He yes. talked about that, reaching much further. Yeah. And he's got spectrum in the 1800 megahertz, um, which we can also use. Then there were the towers. Now, of the 400 or so towers, they're not all useful to me. Yes. I think there's probably about 200, which would be, which you know, we can use. You're, you're taking over the towers? We were taking all of the towers. Yes. And we're taking all of the buildings. Yes. And, um, and, and they've got a data center, for example, which would be useful to us. Uh, but also critically, is we provide employment for about 150 of the staff. Yes. Um, which leaves them, I think, about 40 or so. I think Airtel is taking a few as well, not, not that many. Uh, but at least it provides some security to those people. And, you know, th there is a shortage of, uh, shortage of, um, of resources. In, in your space? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in the technology space. And so that's very useful to us. We, yes. You know, we look forward, once the transaction goes through, we look forward. When do you expect, it, when do you expect that? When do you expect to be welcoming yeah. them? I, I think um, the Communication Authority gazetted it last week, Friday, I think, and it takes 30 days when they invite comment. Uh, and I think soon thereafter, mm. we should be heading towards closure. We also need approval from the Competition Authority as well. And what Airtel then takes is yes. Airtel takes the license yes. because their license runs out in the next few months. Ah, so they're going to operate under that license? So they will operate under the U-Mobile license and uh, they take the customers. Yes. So they will take about two and a half million, million customers. And the other reason for that is because if you wait for Airtel to build their own critical mass, yes. you know, you, you, you kind of need, honestly, you kind of need 25% market share mm. before you've got a critical mass that makes sense. In this market? In, in any telecoms market. Yes. You know, you would be a fool to be buying a, a company mm. that's only got 10% market share because it's going to be an uphill struggle. Yes. I mean, people keep going over the dominance of, of Safaricom. It's mm. not because Safaricom does anything um, wrong or yes. indeed particularly right. It's just that the others are too small to, yes. make, to make sense. That's interesting. And so it then increases their market share mm. 
hopefully to around 25%. Right. And then, you know, it's, it's then a, a, a competitor that's much more, much more robust, if you like. So that's how the thing is, is split. And there are a lot of rumours about Telcom Kenya as well. They're on the shopping, on the shop, uh, on a go shop list, are they, at the moment? That was the I believe they are. They are. And I, I probably don't have any more information mm. than you do, mm. um, but they've made it very clear that yeah. they are looking for buyers. And I, I think, you know, there are lots of rumours about um, different consortiums and stuff that's, yes. um, that's looked at this. But you think something will happen in, in the future? I, I, I think France Telecom have said that they, yes. they would like to exit. Okay. And no. it's not been a great relationship between the shareholders. No, there, so. Now, also, um, yeah, we've had all this sort of uh, hullabaloo and discussion in the news about Safaricom's security contract with the government. I mean, <laughs> I would have thought you'd become a very central figure in all of this when you listen to what everybody's saying. What's the state of play with that? And first of all, what was that about? I mean, what were you providing to the government which was of value to them? And what were they providing to you? It's very simple. We're, we're building uh, a distinct network for them, which works on a different set of frequency, yes. 400 megahertz. Yes. Um, and and it's no secure at 400 then? It's much more secure. Yes. It's, it's an LTE network. Yeah. And we don't even have an LTE uh, commercial deployment here. So the level of encryption on LTE is much greater mm. than on 3G. Uh, and then there's no commercial deployment, so no one else can use it. It, it can only be for, for the government of Kenya. So we'll build that network yes. um, in two cities, Mombasa and Nairobi. We will then provide um, handheld units. And the handheld units are like ultra smartphones. Mm. Right? So they have video capability, voice capability, remote activation capability, yes. so you can turn it on from a central place. So this could be transformative. It is intended work. to be transformative, yeah. yeah. It's intended to be transformative. And then we'll put up a bunch of cameras. Yes. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how many cameras, um, but uh, a few thousand cameras mm. in strategic locations. All hooked up? All hooked up mm. to a central control mm. unit, which again we will build. So it's about building that and it's about yes. managing it, not operating it. Yes. And when we're operating it, we're not the users. The yes. users is, is the security services, you know, the police and, and whoever else. Um, and so it is no different to building any other mobile network. In fact, relatively small compared yes. to the 4,000 sites or so that we, we have today. Um, that will be uh, around about 80, 80 to 100 sites. Um, and that's it. And, and we, provide, we provide internet connectivity to a, a couple of hundred police stations as well. So um, it's, people say, you know, you become a, what does Safari come know about being a, a security provider? But, you, you, but you're not the operator, you're not operating. We're not, we're not doing a security thing, we're building a network. And yes. there's nobody, you know, and forgive the, the, the kind of the arrogance, that yes. <laughs> but there's nobody in this country, or there's nobody in this region yes. who knows more about building a network than Safari come. So that was why the government came. I think the other reason why the government came was because they felt that, you know, if the, <laughs> there, there's no way the Safari come is going to get involved in any kind of unethical deal. Yes. Right? Yeah. Number one, I sit on the UN Global Compact Board. Yes. I'm one of the board members who is charged with driving ethics and corruption mm. in business. Number two, we've got another shareholder yes. who is a British company, mm. and you know, that's, which means we're governed by the British anti-bribery law. Which is very and if you think that the Foreign and Corrupt Practice Act is, is harsh in the UK, mm. in the US, yes. the UK is a lot worse. Mm. And so clearly we can't, and you, I mean, you know my mm. position on, on ethics. And so very I think strong. government felt that you know, if this contract went to Spiracom, at least um, you know, it will be managed ethically and competently. Of course, politics, um, politics has a life of its own and it has consequently yeah. delayed the project because nothing uh, ha really happened between, I think, June yes. when the Hula Baloo started and uh, in August when Parliament finally gave their approval. Um, but then now we now go into the negotiation of the contract because the contract has not been signed yet. And it will be four months elapsed time before yes. we start to see and Before the urgency around it was around counter-terrorism, was that the driver? It's terrorism, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's counter-terrorism as well as, um, you know, ordinary safety and security. Of the citizens. Uh, so, I mean, you know, you've been victim more than once yes, of street side crime. Yes. Um, in very prominent places here. That's right. Uh, so, you know, it, it kind of closes a lot of that stuff down. You, you, you live in London, you know what it was like before they put uh, security right. cameras in Oxford Street. Now you can walk with Ox in Oxford Street with your, your wallet in full view. No one's going to take it because they know they're being watched. Bob, now can I, I know we've got a time 
uh, time constraint, but can I just go back to things like some of the number issues, if I may? Revenue last year, full year, was up 16.4% without putting any numbers. You know, are we on trajectory here for a similar outcome, do you think, or is this a more, uh, are there more headwinds this year? Um, well, there's, uh, there's certainly headwinds. Yes. And, uh, you know, if you spoke with the people in the hotel industry, yes. you can see how the, the, the headwind yes. is. I was in Mombasa um, two weekends ago, and um, the weekend before that I was in the Mara. And you can see occupancy levels are sitting at 20%. So, so, so economic activity levels, uh, Economic you're activity levels mm -hmm. has, been a, has been a challenge. But having said that, you know, we get some guidance at yes. the full year, and we're sticking with those guidance. Okay. So we're pretty confident. That, that was pretty confident guidance. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we're not expecting to see much in the way of variation there. And then, you know, people love your stock because of the dividend, yeah. <laughs> including my father. And so he will, he will kill me if I don't ask you. You know, he says, is his dividend intact? And do you see that trend of, you know, you, you've had a very high dividend payout ratio. You've spoilt some shareholders. Is that still intact? Or, you know, yeah. you're talking about CapEx expenditure. Are we going to have to move some money into things like that? No, I mean, we, uh, uh, the dividend is, we've kept a bit of money back. Mm. Uh, so we're paying out 85%. Yes. And I mean, you can see mm. some of the things that we need to pay for. I mean, U-Mobile has come up. Um, the CapEx on, uh, on the police project, uh, when that finally comes through, it'll be back to back end of the year or maybe even next year. Um, so I don't see that it's going to have a dent in the, um, in the dividend. The dividend is a pro progressive dividend policy. Yes. And uh, we expect to pay more next year. Yes. I mean, it's not the time to be declaring dividend, but we expect to pay more next year than we did this year. Excellent. Yeah. Well, that's sufficient. Thank you very much, Bob. You're very welcome. Thank You're you. Welcome.